Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. All right, so let's jump in here. But today especially, I want to start with a, uh, a brief word of prayer. Sarah and I just prayed for you and for us, but uh, just together right now, let's pray together. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we come and we thank you for loving us as your sons and daughters. God, we thank you that we're your children. We're thankful, God, that your, your thoughts, your plans, your intentions toward us are good and powerful and redemptive, mm -hmm. that they are purpose-fulfilling plans. And God, as we get into your word today, Lord, we pray that you would help us remember that, Lord, that everything that we look at today, Father, would be deposited deep within our hearts, yes, that it would change our lives and that yes. it would solidify our faith. And so God, speak to us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen, 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 and amen. All right, so we started this new series, uh, Facts Not Feelings. We're on our fourth day, and we've just been making the point continually that the facts surrounding who God says you are in Christ, your identity in Christ, is the single greatest contributor to your spiritual success in Christ. You have to know who you are in him if you're going to grow successfully, live successfully, and yes, lead successfully. Mm -hmm. You have to know that. Now, because identity is so important, your identity in Christ is going to get challenged. It just is. And so you need to know when it's getting challenged. Listen, there's, it happens at the most critical of times. Mm -hmm. And as we see in Jesus' life, it was the most critical key moments of his life when he, his identity was getting challenged by people and devils saying to him, if you are the son of God, if you are the Christ, if you are who you say you are, then, mm -hmm. right? And so his identity gets challenged at key moments in his life. And I'm telling you, it's the same for us. Yeah. Our identities get challenged at key moments in our life. So far, we've been talking about the moment of temptation in Jesus' life. We've talked about the moment of transition in Jesus' life. Yesterday, we talked about that moment of Jesus being surrounded mm -hmm. and, and uh, attacked and threatened. Mm -hmm. How important it is to know who you are when those things happen. Yeah, I, and I would say during temptation, transition, I mean, you guys, doesn't take a rocket scientist. We are the most vulnerable mm -hmm. in those sorts of moments. So key moment usually correlates with vulnerability. Yeah, absolutely. So. Now today, beloved, we're going to talk about suffering. And, you know, you might shut me off already. I hope not. I hope not because we're going to look at truth and then we're going to look at truth that's actually going to really, really help us. When we talk about suffering today, Sarah and I both we're not talking about anything lightly, flippantly. Mm -hmm. We're not making little of any of this. Mm -hmm. We know that suffering is a huge issue with, I mean, a lot of different um, uh, pieces and parts and yes. layers to it and facets mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And so I just want you to know, like, we share this with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Uh, we know that there's people out there right now who are watching mm -hmm. that are suffering. Yeah. And our hearts go out to you. We pray for you. We bless you and love you. And we want you to hear this word today. But it's, it, it's not, we're just not saying this lightly. We want you to know that we're entering in with you as much as we can with your own suffering. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'll, let me just say this and then we'll get into the scripture. I believe that physical and emotional suffering will try to capitalize on our feelings more than any other challenges that we have. Mm -hmm. Because when we feel really bad, physically, emotional suffering, I believe that it's, it's at that time when our identity in Christ gets challenged the most mm -hmm. because those challenging times try to capitalize on our feelings. Mm -hmm. And man, we got to get it right. So with that, I would say this. If we can win the identity battle during suffering, we believe, Sarah and I both, we believe that we can win it during any other challenge. Yeah. If you can silly. win the identity challenge mm -hmm. during suffering, whether it be physical or emotional, you can win it during any other challenge. 
So this is really important today. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the suffering of Jesus that we see at this key moment in his life during the crucifixion where his identity is challenged. Luke 23, 35 through 39. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. So look at this, this little passage right here, just these few verses. It's the rulers, meaning the religious rulers, who are sneering him. It's the soldiers who are mocking him. Mm -hmm. And it's the criminals who are, who are being crucified with him are blaspheming him. Mm -hmm. And what is it all about in each of the three instances? If you are the son of God, if you are the Christ, mm -hmm. if you are who you say you are, you should be doing something about this. Yeah. If you have all this power that you say you have, you should make this stop. Mm -hmm. You should change your circumstances. This should go away. This shouldn't be happening to you. See, all of that mm -hmm. is, is pregnant in this story. It is, an, it is not only an attack on his identity, it is an attack on his very mission in life. And right. I, I, would just, I would just say this very quickly. This is a whole nother issue. You understand that if Jesus would have saved himself in that moment of pain, he would not have been able to save the world right. from their sin. He would have forfeited his whole mission would have been forfeited. And sometimes, mm -hmm. beloved, I just want to say there is, a, mm -hmm. there is a temptation to save ourselves from things, to have God deliver us from things mm -hmm. that we absolutely must go through in order to benefit other people mm -hmm. who are watching. Sometimes the world just needs to see a follower of Jesus love him no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge is, if you are this follower of Jesus, that you've got all of these uh, promises in Christ and power and deliverance and all that, then do something about your situation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the thing we need to do is hold on to Jesus faithfully yeah. so others can see what that looks like. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking of Paul too, when he had the thorn in his side. Yes. And he asked the Lord many times over. Three times. Could you please, yeah, three times, um, remove the thorn, remove it. And his resolve was, his grace is sufficient for me. That's right. And during my own time of suffering, our, our deepest hours of suffering, that was my cry to the Lord. I know who you are. I know your character. And your grace is sufficient. I need it now. That's right. I need it now. And you find yourself surviving yeah. what you think you could never, never, ever get through because his grace is sufficient for us. Yeah, and what Paul goes on to say right there, not only is God's grace sufficient for us, but God told Paul, God's strength, he said, mm -hmm. my strength is made perfect, perfect. where? In your weakness. Mm -hmm. So when we're weak, when we're suffering, yeah. There is the grace of God, which is the strength of God to allow us to endure yeah. the sufferings of the world. Yeah. I mean, this is real. Like, how did I get through that? This, oh my yes. gosh, I, I got through that. He is everything he said he is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He didn't promise us that there would be no pain and suffering. He just said in the middle of it, I'll be with you mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Jesus foretold his suffering and then Jesus suffered. Mm -hmm. Jesus foretold the disciples suffering and then they suffered. The disciples foretold our suffering and for the last 2,000 years, believers have been suffering. Beloved, listen to me. I know, I know none of us wanna hear this in our flesh. Suffering is part of who we are. It's part of who we are. There is no escaping suffering in this broken, fallen world. Jesus suffered, listen to me, Jesus suffered so you wouldn't have to suffer hell later, but he didn't suffer so you would never suffer on earth now. Right. Okay? Now, 
with the suffering, of course we need to be people that pray and trust and believe God mm -hmm. to heal and to set free and to deliver. I'm not negating any of those things. But what I'm saying is, if God doesn't come through the way we want him to in the immediate, mm -hmm. that's when we hold on by faith. Mm -hmm. That's where we trust the sustaining grace of God to strengthen us yeah. in our weakness. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it, it's just that way, it's that balance, mm -hmm. dear friends. Yeah. So what do we need to know and what do we want to do, okay? There's so much to this issue of suffering. I've struggled so hard this morning just trying to formulate these thoughts for us. First of all, let me say this. Suffering, as we've said, is part and privilege of the Christian life. Suffering, friends, it's not just for some. It's not just for someone else, mm -hmm. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Thirty-one years of being a senior pastor, thousands of people. We watch pastored thousands of people. It it never ceases to amaze me when someone goes through their own unique time of suffering. Yeah. They act like, why me? Why me? Or yeah. suffering shouldn't happen to me. That's for other people, other places. Right. No, beloved, it's part of our yeah, life. Settle that. Settle that now. Get used mm -hmm. to that now, okay? Now, look at this. Suffering is part and privilege of the Christian life. Philippians 1.29. What does Paul say? For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Listen. Listen to, what, listen to this crazy gospel truth that yeah. Paul shares. For to you it has it's been... been Granted. Granted. Do you know what that means, friends? Privilege. Favor. Mm. God has given us the favor mm -hmm. of not just believing, but suffering mm -hmm. for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. And suffering for Christ's sake, for his cause and his purpose, it, it's, it's not just in a moment of, you know, will you deny your faith or not with a, a gun to your head or a knife to your right. throat. It's whatever God's purpose is. Yeah. Whatever his sake is, mm -hmm. would it be God's purpose to allow us to suffer some kind of physical ailment or, or emotional uh, trial during times of betrayal or slander? Might God be in that doing something? Mm -hmm. Sure he might. Yeah. Sure he might. And it's a privilege. It's, it's a favor that has been granted to us to not just believe but to suffer. And doesn't the spirit rise up in all of us? Sometimes we recognize it, sometimes we don't. But the moment of suffering, you're immediate, my cat's attacking my foot. <laughs> in the moment of suffering, don't all of us recall, Jesus went through this. Yeah. Jesus went through far more than this. I get to experience, whoa, this was so much more intense what Jesus suffered for us than we could even imagine, you guys. Yeah. But the Spirit is always reminding us, you know, yeah. just to measure our suffering according to what Christ has already endured for us. Yeah, and as we're gonna see, our suffering, it's not unique to us, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's experienced by our brothers and sisters around, around the, the world. world. We're gonna see that in a minute. So, number one, suffering is part and privilege of the Christian life. Number two, what do I need to do in these moments? Mm -hmm. Man, I need to commit myself to God. I need to commit myself to God. Peter, in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 23, speaking of Jesus, says this. Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. So what does Jesus do when he's suffering? Hey, he commits himself to God. Mm -hmm. When you're suffering, you have to do that. There's a difference between committing and complaining. Some people just complain to God. Mm -hmm. No, committing ourselves to God is what Jesus did on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. Father, into your hands I commit Good. my spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm committing my suffering to you. I'm committing this trial to you. God, for you to have your way mm -hmm. in me and through me and to those around me, God, I'm committing this to you. Yeah. We have a tendency to, you guys, to assume that his judgment yeah. will happen while we're here on earth. And sometimes it does. I mean, toward the enemy or oh. the accuser. You know what I mean? Like, 
um, being vindicated here yeah. while on earth, but it is a naivete. Yeah. And sometimes we fall into such crazy disappointment because like God didn't come through. But we have to remember that the eternal reward and judgment, eternally speaking, is far greater, right? We may be never vindicated here on earth before man. Sometimes we are when heaven swings low. But we need to know that it's going to be far greater when we're in eternity, the yeah. judgment and reward we receive for it. Yeah. Number three, resist the devil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as much as we commit ourselves to God, we need to resist the devil. First mm -hmm. Peter chapter five, verse eight and nine. Look at what Peter says here. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. That's right. So you're going through suffering and you're resisting him. Mm -hmm. What is the thing he's gonna come after while you're resisting him? Your identity. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you were really God's kid, he would never be allowing this to happen to you. Mm -hmm. and And, I mean, just, I don't even like rehearsing those things. They're yeah, so devilish no, and is. gross. But, yeah. but those are those things that you have mm -hmm. to resist, yeah. right? So it's, it's committing myself to God because I know who I am in him and who he is to me. But it's also resisting the devil as he comes with his challenges against my identity in the midst of my suffering. So I resist him. I'm steadfast in the faith, knowing who I am and whose I am. And then I realized, like we said a minute ago, these same sufferings yeah. are happening by our brothers all around yeah. the world. Those who seek to save their lives will lose it. Yeah. And those who lose their life for my name's sake will save their lives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there's nothing that you're facing that, that is unique to you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't you know, make it less or whatever, but it's it just... Helps. All of these things, friends, it's mm -hmm. just part of living in a fallen, broken world. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four, remember the reward. We, we've mentioned that just a minute ago, but this is a, a really important point. Remember the reward. As I'm going through my suffering, it's not for nothing. God is working a purpose in it. There's a plan in it. Mm -hmm. I know it involves pain and struggle and heartache. And, it, you know, it's, again, it's so multifaceted. But listen, God is at work. Yeah. He's doing something. Remember the reward while you're suffering. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. In us. In us. Not, not just to, to us. us. Right, or through us. That's right. In us. So do you, see, do you see the identity thing here? He says, we're children of God. Mm -hmm. And we're not just children, we're heirs. Of God, and we're joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. And he says, if indeed we suffer with him. Yeah. In other words, as children of God, it doesn't mean we don't suffer, it means that we do suffer. Mm -hmm. It's part of who we are. Yeah. It's part of who we are. But that doesn't end the story because the suffering turns into glory. And that glory gets revealed to us in heaven, but it gets revealed in us, in us. And we're not here to talk about heaven this morning, but the glory that we are going to experience mm -hmm. around us and in us, it's not even worthy to be compared to the, the, the nothingness of our presence of what do you mean nothingness, Steve? Yeah. I'm suffering with cancer right now. Mm -hmm. I'm suffering with grief and loss. Mm -hmm. I, I know, but the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared to the glory that'll be revealed. 
And so I, I trust God with that. I commit myself to God that way. And I resist the devil's lies that tell me this is for naught and nothing. And there's nothing good to come of this in your future. No, no, no. I commit myself to God. I know that there's glory coming. And I know when I experience that glory, I'm going to look back on my pain as real as it is today and go, it's nothing yeah. compared to what I've got right now. Yeah. That's hope. Yeah. That's truth. That's reality, man. Mm -hmm. You've got to have eternal perspective of the reward that's coming when you're going through suffering. Let, let me just wrap this up and then we're sure. going to take communion. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. Again, just bespeaking the, the, um, the, the benefit and the purpose mm -hmm. of our suffering. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. As a benediction, beloved, listen to this. But may the God of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect you. It means to make you thoroughly complete because you can't be complete in Christ without some suffering. May he perfect you. May he establish you. It means may God give you spiritual resolve and determination. May he strengthen you. May he confirm spiritual knowledge and power in you. And may he settle you. May he ground you. May he consolidate you. May he give you a heart of flesh and a spine of steel. Mm, that's good. So, beloved, suffering... It's a serious thing. Anybody who tells you it's not part, part of our life in Christ, they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just claim this scripture, or believe this or do this or do that, you'll never suffer. Mm -mm. I'm sorry, it's not Bible. Right. But you need to know this in the midst of suffering, Jesus is there and he's up to something in your life that can only happen in the midst of you suffering. Mm -hmm. It's not for nothing, beloved. Yeah. So let's partake of communion together right now. And then just a closing announcement or two. So, wow, Lord, there's so much here. And we, we can't talk about our own suffering without magnifying the suffering of Jesus for our benefit. And so on the night that Jesus was betrayed, which was part of his suffering, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Mm -hmm. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood. It's the new covenant. It's shed for you. Take it and drink it and do this in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, this morning we remember your suffering. We thank you. We magnify you. For in not saving yourself, you saved us. Now, Lord, may you have your way in our lives as we suffer. Whether we are right now or not, mm -hmm. it matters not. We will at some point. Mm -hmm. God, may we apply these truths as we suffer ourselves. And may we look with great reward to the future. God bless the bread and the cup today. May it be health and strength and life to us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Let's go ahead and partake together, beloved. Amen, God bless you, God bless you. Friends, there's some really exciting things happening. I wanna be able to stay in touch with you. Sign up for our email. Send an email to info at steveberger.org. And we'll be able to get in touch with you. Of course, you can continue to watch on Facebook, Instagram TV, um, Telegram. If you haven't signed up for Telegram, get the Telegram app. We stay in touch that way as well. But I'm about to make some really exciting announcements about some unbelievable things that God is doing. So stay in touch with us. We'll stay in touch with you. See you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Share, share, share. Help us get the word out on suffering. God bless you, beloved. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.